This is the second installment of our series on the last church. Herein, we'll continue to study the lukewarmness of our church and the corrective measures to be taken. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The first three chapters of Revelation records Christ's evaluation of the church at different periods in the history of the world. The names of the seven churches are symbolic of the church in different periods of the Christian era. The number seven indicates completeness and is symbolic of the fact that the messages extend to the end of time. The Lord's diagnosis of the seventh church, Laodicea, our church, is unflattering. The church is lukewarm, neither cold or hot. Lukewarmness makes Christ nauseous. Verse 16, So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Spew is from the Greek word that means to vomit. Our spiritual condition, our lukewarmness, makes Christ sick. But how did we get here? The primary cause for lukewarmness is an intolerance for sound doctrine, and an unwillingness to obey God's holy law. Romans 7 verse 12, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3, reading from the NIV, For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Brethren, we are here. The gospel is a system of practical truths destined to work great changes in human character. In the plan of restoring in men the divine image, it was provided that the Holy Spirit should move upon human minds, and be as the presence of Christ, a molding agency upon human character. When we disdain the plain teaching of Scripture, we shun, or grieve, the Holy Spirit, after which, moral degeneracy and spiritual declension sets in. John 14 verse 15, the words of Christ, If ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 21, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Luke 6 verse 46, And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Obedience is, and has always been, the fruit or evidence of love. We declare our love for Christ when we obey him. Disobedience cuts us off from the Father. Nature abhors a vacuum, evil naturally fills the void that exists when disobedience separates us from the love of God. Unless the truth of God uplifts us out of depravity and make us reflect the image of God, we are lost. Unfortunately, we bring our own righteousness to the table, we straddle the fence, one foot in the church and the other in the world. Christ wishes that we were either cold or hot. The Lord prefers that we serve God in totality and hates the pretense, the claim that we love God yet embrace the world. 1 John 2 verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. James 4 verse 4, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We make Christ sick, nauseous, by being friendly with the world, while claiming to love God, bearing the name of Christ.
Not only do we have divided loyalties, professing to love God and the world at once, but we are divided, literally. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. That is, the Holy Spirit gave an assortment of gifts to the church so that there would not be any divisions in the body of Christ. Each church member should have equal concern for each other. John 17, in his prayer to his Father, four times it is recorded that Christ wished his disciples would be one as he and the Father are one. Division is not from God. But here we are, divided by race, divided by nationalities, and as if these divisions weren't enough, we are also divided by politics. Here in the U.S., folk who profess to be heaven-bound are divided by political loyalties, Republican versus Democrats, each despising the other while claiming to belong to Christ, giving the Lord's enemies cause to blaspheme. This is lunacy, it doesn't make any sense. But while the doors of mercy are held open on the hinges of grace, it is not too late for a change. We can avoid making Christ sick. The initial step, confession and repentance. 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Brethren, all means all. Satan and his confederacy of evil angels are always on the alert to see by what means they may trap and ruin souls who have enlisted under the blood-stained banner of Jesus. When we yield to temptation, for all men have sinned, we must look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Having confessed your sins, believe that the word of God cannot fail, but that the Father is faithful. All who come to him in the name of his Son, will be forgiven. We must believe this wholeheartedly. And note, the greater the weight of sin, the greater the need for Jesus. When the Holy Spirit pinpoints the sin, go to the Father, you will not be turned away. God is faithful, he hears every faithful prayer and will cleanse us thoroughly. However, the forgiven soul is not to sit on his laurels and be idle. James 4 verse 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. 1 John 3 verse 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. When we break God's law, we commit sin. This is the sin of commission. But note, James 4 says that if we know to do good and refuse to do it, we sin? This is the sin of omission, omitting to do what is right. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Ambassador is translated from the Greek word, presbuo, which means preacher. It has a deeper meaning than standing behind the pulpit. The preacher in the pulpit announces the theory of the gospel, but the practical piety of the church, our very lives, demonstrate the power of truth, showing its real value. Receiving the truth, we become also recipients of the grace of Christ, and are called to devote our sanctified human ability to the work in which Christ was engaged, we become laborers together with God. It is to make us agents for God, that divine truth is brought home to our understanding. It is the special duty of Christians to seek and save the lost. Begin with family members, relatives, friends, your inner circle. You don't need fluency in theology and hermeneutics. A life of love is the greatest sermon that can be preached. Oh how greatly Christ would be honored and glorified before irreligious, worldly men and women if his followers were what they claim to be, true Christians, the love of Christ constraining us to make him known before an idolatrous world, showing the marked difference between those who serve God and those who serve him not. 
Christ wouldn't have felt the need to vomit if those who are called by his name are clearly and distinctly separated from the world. First Corinthians 12, the Holy Spirit gives gifts for the edification of the church. All the varied talent that we possess, soul, body, and spirit, are given them of God to be so educated and trained that they may reach the highest possible degree of excellence. Our talents were not given to satisfy egos. The Spirit didn't distribute talents for financial gain or fame. Every faculty, Every talent with which God has endowed us is to be used, to his name's glory. Man must cooperate with Christ, to restore the moral image of God in man. Christ examines his church. He sees selfishness, he sees a wanton disregard for God's purposes, he sees mainstream failure to have our priorities straight, and he gets sick. Matthew 5 verse 16, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Christ commissions us to shine as lights in the world, by reflecting the light of God as seen when we follow Jesus Christ. Now is the time for us to say, I will close my heart to everything that would hinder my communion with Christ, I will open the windows of my soul heavenward that I may understand spiritual things. We need to talk with God in regard to our individual need of the Holy Spirit. The word of God, I say, the word of God must be our assurance. Let us seek the Lord that we may learn how to work his works in the world. This will make us successful missionaries. Day by day we are to put forth personal diligent and effort to improve. Every day we are to use our Christian intelligence in the work of strengthening the weak, and encouraging the desponding, the rejected and dejected. A great test is coming to every soul. Shall we not then work and watch and pray and praise the Lord? The Father bought us at great price, the death of His only begotten Son. In these last days let's refocus our talents and energies towards spiritual things. Let our aim be to do all to the glory of God. Why should we continue to make Christ sick? The Last Church <laughs>